Hi everyone, I'm Amy with Eating Healthy Spending Less and today I'm going to be showing you how to make sourdough bread. You don't want to miss it. About a year ago, my husband and I decided to start implementing sourdough bread into our diet. We both had been gluten-free for about seven years for different health and digestive issues that we were having when we would eat wheat. And so we had learned through researching that sourdough bread is actually really good for your digestive system. And people who do not have celiac disease should really be eating bread uh, on a weekly basis because it really is uh, that good for you. But if you do have celiac disease, you really need to stay away from eating any gluten, no sourdough. However, if you do not have celiacs, I highly recommend trying this if you are gluten-free because what happens is when you make a sourdough starter, which is just water and flour, and you ferment it, it collects all of the wild yeast that is in the air and that's in the flour. And in the fermentation process of making a sourdough starter, you actually break down, or it actually breaks down the gluten, and um, it's much more tolerable on our stomachs. So today, I already have my sourdough starter made. If you want to learn how to make a sourdough starter, you're going to want to check out my previous video on how to make a sourdough starter. But for today, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of making sourdough bread. First things first, when you start off making your sourdough bread, your hands are going to be in the dough. So you want to have your hair tied back because from experience, you don't want your hair down where your hair is in over the bowl and you're working the dough. No, always tie your hair up first. <laughs> People use various techniques when making sourdough bread. A lot of people do not use a food scale, but my friend taught me to use a food scale, and so that is what I use to measure out my ingredients. This one is very inexpensive on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box. It's about $13, and I like using a food scale, and I will always use a food scale because it, it ensures that I'm going to get the perfect loaf of bread every single time. And also, my recipe that I use makes two loaves of bread. I highly recommend always making at least two loaves of bread. This is a labor of love, and so why make one when you can make two? <laughs> Today, I am making six loaves of sourdough bread, and I have a helper that's going to come help me with her hands. Sometimes I recruit members of my family to help me because this is a little bit of an arm workout. Lastly, I just want to also preface by saying temperature matters. When it comes to making a sourdough starter, it loves to be in warmth. And so I find using lukewarm water or a little bit of warm water activates my starter even more. Keeping my starter in a warm place by my stove helps it stay happy. And then also the bowls that I use to make my sourdough starter are plastic. I, I'm sure a stainless steel bowl will work fine. However, those tend to stay on the cooler side. And so I would recommend using a glass bowl or plastic bowls when making your sourdough bread. These are from Dollar Tree. They are very flimsy, uh, but they get the job done. They're like pretty flimsy, but of course they're $1. If they break, I can replace them. However, I have had these for a few years and I have no issues. So uh, head to Dollar Tree and pick up some big bowls because you need really big ones to make sourdough bread because your dough is going to rise very high. <laughs> okay, first things first, we're going to start with our starter. So we're actually going to put in 320 grams of starter. I just keep a dish towel or a linen napkin over my starter. I'm going to turn on my food scale, set the bowl on, and then I'm going to zero it out. Okay, so now I add 320 grams of starter. And I added too much, that's okay. Okay. 
So what I do is I just start putting some back in until I get to 320. And it doesn't have to be exact. It can be 321, 323, it doesn't matter. There we go. Do you see that? I hope you can. It's at 321. Okay, so now we're going to zero it out and add 630 grams of lukewarm water. There we go. I'm gonna use that for another loaf, so it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna zero it out. And now I'm going to add 1,020 grams of flour. I use the King Arthur brand flour. This is the brand that I always use for my starter and for making bread. The reasoning why I like this so much is because of the flour that's in it. Let me see. There's just unbleached hard red wheat flour and malted barley flour. A lot of more inexpensive flours have additives to it, and this one doesn't, which is why I like this. This is the 25-pound um, bag, and I buy it at Smart and Finals. You can get it online, too, I believe. Okay, let me... There we go. 1,020. This is for two loaves of bread. See why you need a big bowl? <laughs> okay, I got a little too much. There we go. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do my other two bowls that I'm doing and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to mix it up. Okay, after you are done putting together your ingredients, um, you always wanna make sure that you have some starter left over. If you use all your starter, then you're gonna have to start all over again with making a starter. So you wanna keep at least a fourth to a half of a cup of starter. Um, here I have plenty, but it's also important that I refeed this with water and flour again, put my dish towel over it and put it back in the cabinet. Or you can put it in the refrigerator uh, and store it for a little bit. It slows down the fermentation process where you don't have to feed it every day. And so that is what I typically do. So for now, I'm going to put this aside and show you how to mix these up. Okay, I have recruited my help to help me do this. First things first though, if you have any jewelry on, you want to remove it because we are using our hands to mix the ingredients. Um, you could use a wooden spoon, but I highly recommend that you don't because the gluten is going to be activated when you use your hands and it's going to get really sticky and fun. <laughs> it's like playing with Play-Doh. And um, 
it's really important to the sourdough texture of your bread when you use your hands. So let's show you how we do it. This girl's done it with me a lot, so she knows. You're a professional. <laughs> you wanna say hello? Hi. <laughs> okay, get your hands in there. We use our right hand or your dominant hand and you want to do swirling techniques. And you're mixing that starter water and flour together. Once you get it incorporated like this, you're going to see dry bits at the bottom. Just pick them up and pull them over. Do your swirling techniques, kiddo. Okay, once I get to this stage where there's still some dry spots and my hand can't really move anymore, I dip my left hand in water and then I am able to get the flour off my fingers and nothing sticks to my left hand. It's okay if there's a little excess water, it'll all absorb just fine. And now I'm able to take my right hand again, go underneath and pull it over and get those dry bits. If these dry bits really bother you, you can take some water and just kind of sprinkle it just a little bit, not even a half of a teaspoon worth on top. And that's it. We're not going to overwork it. So now I'm just going to get the rest of the flour off this hand. I'm going to help my daughter. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to take a bench scraper. These are about $2 on Amazon, and it's not wet or anything, it's totally dry, and I'm just going to push down around the edges like this, just to get any floury bits down into the dough. And I just kind of wipe them in, and that's it. So now, I take these napkins. They are just a cloth napkin. You can use a terry cloth dish towel, whatever you want. And we're going to get this wet. You want to totally submerge it in water and then wring it out really well to where it's just damp. Okay, so they are wet, just barely damp. And then you just want to cover the bowls. And I don't use cold, cold water. I use like a lukewarm to warm water for this because we really want to activate that starter. So now I'm just going to let these sit for about 20 minutes and I'm going to set the timer. And then when we come back, we're going to add the salt, mix in the salt, and then I'll show you the next process. Okay, my bowls have been sitting here for 20 minutes. Let me show you what we do next. We're going to add salt. So I've already gotten my salt all ready to go for all three bowls. And what you wanna do is just 24 grams of salt, put it on top of your dough. And then I like to get both of my hands wet in water. And we're going to put enough water on here to just kind of cover the salt. Just maybe like two little scoops out of your hand. And now we're going to just do lots of this and incorporating all of this salt into the dough. I like to use two hands because one hand just makes it go a lot slower. And always make sure you wash your hands before doing this. Everything needs to stay very sanitary. So you can still kind of see some of those pink spots from the salt. You just want to keep working them in. If your hands get sticky, you can add a little bit more water and dip your hands in and just work it in. 
there's no specific amount to use. Just kind of got to try it out and feel for it. This is an arm workout. <laughs> okay, that's it. So now I can still see some pink, but it's okay. I've gotten it all incorporated. Now I'm going to stick my towel on top and let this sit for another 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna do those ones right there. Now that all of our ingredients have been incorporated together and we have given it time for the dough to rest, we are going to start four rounds of stretch and fold. Stretch and fold is basically exactly what it sounds like. You're stretching the dough and folding it over and you're doing that all around the bowl and we do it four rounds and in between each round, we let it rest for 40 minutes. This allows the gluten to start working and you're going to see the dough start to rise and big bubbles are going to form inside the dough. It's really important that each time you use water to submerge your hand in that you uh, empty it out each round and fill it up with fresh water which is what I've been doing. So let me show you how to do this. This towel is still wet. If you ever find that your towel starts getting dry, get it wet again. So here it's been sitting, kind of looks like cheese curds. <laughs> I'm going to dip my hand in the water and I'm going to start on, we'll say north, south, east and west. So starting on the north side, we're gonna take it, stretch it over and just rotate. I go counterclockwise. And this is literally what stretching and folding is. This one is done. So I'm going to put my towel back over and I'm going to let it rest for 40 minutes. Now, each round of stretch and folds only takes about a minute to do, so this is not going to be a strenuous process in doing this. The most difficult task was just mixing all the ingredients together.
Okay, so the stretch and fold process is officially over. <laughs> and so now we are going to work on our pre-shaping. So we have a pre-shaping, a final shaping, then you tidy them up in their loaf pans, package them up and let them sit in the fridge all night long. So I know this is a little bit of a process. Like I said in the beginning, this is a labor of love. That's why I make six loaves of bread at a time. So six loaves, my husband eats this every single day and then we eat it as well, but he eats it way more than we do. And it lasts us about eight to 10 days. And then I start the process again of making more bread. Okay, so let me show you how to do a pre-shaping. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna have, if you have really nice countertops like granite or uh, some sort of marble or something where you don't have this grout, then you don't need to put anything here. But because I have grout, I use either a large cutting board or these silicone mats to uh, do this process. So I'm going to first take some flour and I'm just going to sprinkle it out over my surface like so, because this dough is going to be very sticky. Okay, as I was getting ready to show you guys how I do this, when I took the towel off my sourdough, I noticed that it hadn't risen as high as it normally does. So I count that for the temperature. It's been a lot colder lately and our home has been a little bit more chilly and I believe that that is what kind of kept my sourdough from really rising like it normally does. So I set it next to my fireplace and I turn the fireplace on and it has risen the way that it should. This is what it should look like. It's super puffy and bubbly and um, so this is what you're going for when you are doing this. So what we're going to do is see how much it weighs. It weighs 2,125 grams. So I'm going to split this in half and I need to account for the weight of this bowl, which is about 30 grams. So I'm going to take half, which will be about 1,050 is what I'm going for. I like to flour my bench scraper because it does get really sticky. This is really sticky. <laughs> okay, we're going to separate it into two loaves. Actually, I'm gonna get my hand floured. That's close enough. And then what we wanna do is, we wanna do that north, south, east, and west thing again, where we take the top half and fold it over, the bottom half, fold it over, and then I fold over these corners. And then what you do is you start, and I like my hands to be well floured. I just start tucking it into itself like this. Okay, and that is what pre-shaping is. And now we're just going to let it rest. I'm going to take the rest of our dough lay it out and do the same thing. And if it gets too sticky, you can flour your hands a bit. And 
tuck in these corners. And then fold it into itself. Okay, now I'm going to take my same damp towel, cover them, and let them rest for 20 minutes. Something I forgot to mention is that tension is very important when you're working with sourdough. So, when you fold it in like this, let me just show you real quick what you're going for. It's really sticky, <laughs> but it's really fun. It's like adult Play-Doh. You're always pulling in opposites. And then what you want to do is you really want to create this tension on this bottom side. So that's why I'm pulling it in like this to itself because I'm creating tension on the underside, on this side. And then when I take it, I take my hands and I scoop under and I'm creating this circular scooping motion where I'm scooping the top down underneath, like so. And that's what you're going for. You will see some bubbling and that's okay because I'm gonna show you how I roll these into their loaf pans. So this is my last loaf that I'm prepping. And if you find that your loaves get too sticky underneath, you can just take some flour, pull them up, and then dust it with some flour. And you can always use your bench scraper, but these silicone mats make it really easy to just use your hands. Okay. And I don't ever dust the top with flour, just the bottom side, because you want it to stick to itself. Tucking it in. Tucking it into itself. And now we let it rest for that 20 minutes. And then we're done with the resting process. No more resting except for overnight in the fridge. That's it. So while my dough is resting, I'm gonna show you the loaf pans that I use to bake my sourdough in. A lot of people like to use the Bannetons, which are beautiful, they make beautiful sourdough loaves. I personally do not own any, and so I like to use my silicone baking molds. I like these because you don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to put any flour in them, nothing. You just put your loaves in and you're done. So I like to make two of these size loaves, but my favorite are these extra long Wilton brand loaf pans. They are amazing and you can get a pack of two on Amazon for around 10 to $12. The prices do vary and oftentimes they are out of stock. A lot of these sell um, on my Instagram page. So I will put a link for you below if you would like to check these out. If they are out of stock, just keep checking, get on the email list to get notified when they're back in stock. These extra long size ones are worth it. Now, how do I keep 
the loaves from sticking. You can get the uh, parchment sheets, parchment paper sheets at um, Dollar Tree. They sell them there, or these ones are from Costco. They are the perfect size. for my loaf pan, perfect size. So I just lay these in here and then when I'm ready to put my loaves in, I just put them right in. And then I use, I'll show you the bags here in a little bit of how I wrap up my sourdough loaves to go in the fridge for the night. Okay, here we go. I hope that this is a good angle for you so you can see what to do. You're going to take your bench scraper at this point and you're going to flip it over like that. Now, my hands tend to get really sticky working with this dough, and so I just put them in my flour and just get them kind of floured so that the dough won't stick to me. You're going to take this top portion like this and flip it over, probably about a third of the way down. It's not technically half, so about a third. And you're going to like braid this. So you're going to, it's like a fishtail braid. You just take pieces from the side, pinch them and wrap them over. Like that. And it, you wanna keep the dough pretty sticky so that it adheres to itself without adhering to you. <laughs> it's really just about practicing. Okay, at this point, this is when my hands get really sticky. A lot of people, they don't wanna roll this really tightly because they like all the air bubbles. I don't like all the air bubbles. We use this as sandwich bread, and so I wrap mine very tight. So I'm going to take the bottom here, and just like you would with cinnamon rolls, you're going to wrap it or roll it, that's the right word. As it gets a little sticky, I'll just put a little flour there. And this is when I kind of go to town. I really pull it, pull on it because I'm using extra long loaf pans and I want this to get really long. And as it gets sticky, I just flour it some more. And just keep going and see how tight it is. <laughs> it's tight and it's long. So now my kids are singing and playing in the background. <laughs> now I take my, they just heard me say that I think. Okay, so now I just take my very long loaf here, stick it in the pan. Okay, to wrap these up, I like to use these bread bags. They are from Smart and Final. They also, um, you can get them off Amazon. I'll put a link for you below of the same size ones as these are. They're like party bags, but they're really long made for bread. So, common question I get asked is if I reuse these, and the answer is no. I tried reusing these by letting them air out inside out but I noticed an odor and I didn't like it. And so now I just don't do that. There we go. So I just take them, put them in these bags, twist the top, and then I just use these little clips from, let me see, from Dollar Tree. So. These ones you can find right now in the kitchen section and I just clip them off and this is good to go. 
I'm gonna put all of them in the refrigerator and overnight, at least eight hours, let them ferment. If you have uh, gluten sensitivities and you're not used to eating uh, sourdough yet, then you can leave these in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. So the longer the fermentation process, the uh, more gluten has been broken down so that your stomach can digest the gluten more easily and other enzymes that can cause tummy issues. So, but for us, we are very used to eating sourdough and so just going in overnight is all we need. So it's about seven o'clock here right now. I'll start baking these around seven o'clock in the morning. So they're, go they're going to get about a 12 hour fermentation process. Good morning. So my kids are still asleep, so I'm trying to do this quietly. Um, I just preheated my oven to 500 degrees and I have a pan in there filled with water. You want it filled as high up as it can go because you are going to be steaming and baking your sourdough bread at the same time. So I'm going to pull out half of my loaves, which is three loaves of sourdough bread. I'm gonna let the other three sit in the fridge for a little bit longer. Let me show you how I prep them for the oven. You want to use a knife that is pretty sharp or some sort of razor blade when making a slice into your bread. If you don't make a slice into your bread, then it's going to kind of like explode a bit in the oven and yeah, it's just not a good idea. So I like to take this serrated knife and dip it in flour and make three slits on a diagonal into the bread about a half of an inch to an inch deep. My oven is at 500 degrees preheated right now, and I'm going to put my loaves of bread in the oven. I'm going to lower the oven temperature to 475 degrees right now as I put them in the oven. They will bake for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to lower the temperature again to 450 degrees, and they'll bake an additional 20 minutes. I know it sounds confusing, but I promise you it's really easy. Just remember, 475, 20 minutes, 450, 20 minutes. <laughs> Here we go. Aren't these loaves of bread beautiful? These, this is why I use the extra long loaf pans because I just love how these loaves turn out. They are perfect for sandwich bread. We use an electric knife to slice them and we store the loaves of bread in those same plastic bags I showed you earlier. So oftentimes we'll freeze when I make six loaves, we'll freeze at least three of the loaves of bread uh, the crust part is just a little bit different when you freeze the bread, but it's still delicious no matter what. The smell is contagiously delicious. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would appreciate it if you would give it a big thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos of what I make in my kitchen, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.